Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, this is Jamie Green, host of Let's Talk Destiny podcast and president and founder of A Mother's Cry. Today, I am again joined uh, by my number one prince. And we want to talk for just a few moments um, about the new initiative that A Mother's Cry has just started and it's uh, called the Project Redemption Initiative. As I've shared with some of you before, the Project Redemption Initiative is a transformative effort aimed at reforming our criminal justice system. Uh, We're going to start with the parole and probation processes, though we know that there are many elements to our criminal justice system that need to be addressed. But we're going to start with that particular um, area. Now, I've reached out to some of you and will continue to do so to explain to you why it is imperative that you partner with us on this initiative because it enables us to collectively reshape the criminal justice system. And so today I am talking with and uh, bringing to your attention, as I said, my number one prince, who is currently incarcerated in the Maryland state prison system and can give us an inside view um, and some inside insight as to the condition of the prison system um, with regard to the individuals who are being warehoused on these concrete plantations. and the the buildings, the systems, all of it, and why uh, this initiative is so important. So first, I want to welcome you back to uh, the platform, number one. (laughs) And so as you and I have talked about this project, uh, Redemption Initiative, and we've talked about redemption and what it means to be you know, to reform and to give people a second chance and so forth and so on. Why um, do you think that this initiative is important and that it would benefit individuals such as yourself who have definitely proven that you deserve a second chance? Uh, The first thing is, so it's past thinking that it'll help. It's known that it is and the thing about redemption is see even even when we say things like uh, a person deserves another chance that in and of itself should make people stop and think about exactly where we are as a society and as human beings because to think that we have to prove ourselves to other people as if we deserve another chance, as if people give another chance when we have shown and proved to ourselves first. So redemption deals with self first. So when you see people who have proven, first and foremost, they have overcome themselves. And most people, even outside of these things, have not even done that. So let's stop judging, first of all, understand what redemption is. People have shown to themselves that they deserve another chance from the self. This is self-love. This is the real self-healing. This is the redemption. This is the brilliance of self. And then when you have these type of initiatives that you're starting, to give people who have done this a voice and a spotlight is absolutely necessary and it is it, it's a must have. It's, it's no ifs, ands, or buts about this. This redemptive brilliance initiative is a must have and everyone needs to get behind it because it actually, even though it reaches and starts as a foundation in here, Again, it's actually a healing process for all parties involved. 
so even outside of the fence, for those of you who do have people in here, you have taken this redemptive journey with your loved one. You have found out certain things about yourself. You have overcome certain obstacles in yourself. So you have healed as well. So this is a must-have for all parties as well. Thank you. Thank you. And so as we are, you know, moving forward with this initiative, we are explaining to people why we need to collaborate um, because all of this is impacting our, all of us. It impacts every single one of us, not just people who have loved ones behind the wall, but everyone is impacted by the crisis of mass incarceration. I believe in the power of collective action. And I believe that when people come together, that have the same mind, the same passion, same vision, that we can get so much more done. And as you have talked about, and let's talk about it a little further, it has been demonstrated that there is need for reform in our criminal justice system. In your opinion, what are some of the main issues um, that you see that we must absolutely positively address? Well, one of the biggest things um, as far as reform, again, this word reform, the prisons in and of itself are limited. And I mean almost to the point of being obsolete as far as actual program that brothers can force ancestors can reform go through a, a, a redemptive process through actual program so you have you know the basic programs like um you get some people to get the gd now remember everything is limited as well so the few programs that you do have you had to schooling program but sometimes you get a few that can go and get their GED then you have uh, you might get an employment readiness program you might get uh, AA program you know these same basic things that have been going on over and over again we need more programs you again you had many women that have been in these behind these walls for years and you you have a, a lot of this inmate or convict population they respect certain men and women in here more than even the administration and what well, it would be a great help for groups like this this initiative to do is get with these administrations get them to have more programs that I'm talking about that push serious change. Um, you know, learning about self, knowledge of self programs, how to actually deal with pains and traumas from the past, how to think through situations, and start using the men and women in here that already have an ear and a voice with these brothers and sisters. We, like you said, it's a collective, it's a collaboration. We have to work together and just stop, you know, leaving things to chance. So that's one of the first things I would say as far as actual teaching people how to deal with and overcome the traumas of life through real actual programs. That's powerful. That's powerful. And I was making notes um, as you were speaking, because it is extremely important. When we talk about the Project Redemption Initiative, we're not just talking about re-entry programs. Those are popping up pretty much everywhere. But what we want to address are the issues and the concerns of our loved ones while they are behind the prison wall so that when they do return to society, they come out more prepared. There's no way you can keep an individual locked in a cell for years and years and sometimes decades 
and that it not impact their mental health their physical health, because the food is not the most nutritionist either. Um, yeah. They're limited as to basic human rights as far as consistently going out and getting some fresh air and some sunshine. You cannot have a person locked in a cage for years and limit um, their interaction with other human beings besides that one person that's in the cage with them and not expect that it's going to have a negative impact on them. And so this is one of the things that this that we want to address with this initiative is ways that we can impact lives positively while they're still behind the wall and do what we can do to prepare them when they come out. I was talking to some mothers the other day um, who were saying that their uh, children were about to be released uh, from incarceration. And they we were just talking about basic, simple things that we could do to help our children who've been behind the wall for a long time, making sure that they um, have their identification, make sure that they have all of the paperwork they need, make sure that they have um, a place where they can go to work without the stress of being um, marginalized because they have been incarcerated. See what we can find out about places of employment, especially when we know they're on their way home, when we have a release date. Um, go into group therapy, you know, to family therapy with them so that we can have a better understanding <coughs> of the individual that will be coming home to us because the individual that will be coming home to us is not the same individual that left us. So these are some of the things that we talked about, um, you know, just doing what we can do to make life, the transition as easy as possible. And so this is also uh, something that we want to, or we're going to address in this initiative. I also, um, you know, we, we mentioned why it's important for people to support, but I really want to drive that point home because by partnering with this initiative, you become a leader in your area in the criminal justice reform. We have enough people getting on television, um, doing press conferences, making you know really nice sounding sound bites, but we don't have a lot of people working to bring these things to fruition. And so this is what we want to do. Um, as I was talking to my son, and we're going to talk a little bit about this before we go, with regard to the condition of these state prisons. The prison um, where my son is located was recently in the news again uh, about the condition of the prison. And um, it's statewide. It's not just there. You know, the the answer to everything being the way it is, is because staff shortage, that's the answer for everything. Um, but I also am very concerned, as I said, about the mental health and the physical health of our loved ones behind this the wall. And so we're going to do all we can. Um, you and I have talked about the uh, drug abuse, the substance abuse uh, really is an epidemic um, behind these walls. And a lot of times outside, we don't even know about. Uh, I know a young lady that works at the hospital here that talks about how often inmates are brought into the emergency room from the prison where you are who have overdosed. And so just briefly, Talk about what you are seeing there, uh, because I want the people to hear from the inside, not just from a mother who's frustrated and overwhelmed, but from the inside. What are you seeing with regard to um, substance abuse addiction um, behind the wall? Again, right, it's the first thing that, that really has to happen is people have to get out of this 
illusion that these prisons are built to reform. Right. Like that that really that mindset, I mean, and again, it's been proven study after study, case after case. It's been shown this just is not the case. So you have, if you look at the streets, right? Because again, oftentimes when people look at these prisons, people start with the prison as if that's where people were born and raised. People came here from the street. Right. If you look around the street, if you look around at what's actually being said, even with government officials, you listen, they talk about uh, fentanyl overdoses, heroin usage. They talk about uh, pills being popped, uh, even housewives, suburb, sub, suburban America, urban America. This is a problem for society, for everybody. Right. So then when you have a, a group of people that already have some type of drug problem, drug addiction, then you send them to prison where most people should be going through some type of drug treatment. That's right. Which again, you see certain disparities when it comes to certain groups of people. Again, mainly being those that come from urban areas. Instead of being sent to these types of programs, we get sent here. We get sent to prison. Now you have a group of people in prison who still have these drug addictions and not receiving any treatment. And I repeat again, no real programs to help deal with addiction. Then you have them locked in the cell. Like the, the you think about most prisons in the state ever since uh, the COVID issue. And this was what started in 2020, right? Mm -hmm. So it's now 20, it's now 2024. Now, since then, you got prisons where people only coming out 15 minutes a day, um, every three days. Wow. That you you like where I'm at. Sometimes. You might come out and get a 15 minute shower and you back in the cell. I mean, we talking about 24 hours a day. Right. You might come out 15 minutes, an hour, 30 minutes. Sometimes, some days you don't come out at all. And then as you said, you dealing with people with mental health issues, drug addiction. Then you got them locked in a cell in a box all day long. Not to mention, most of these brothers and sisters are already um, young, young in the mind. I mean, all types of trauma issues. Right. And again, I repeat, not getting no type of programming or real help. So drugs are being, you know, all over, pushed all over the place, all types of drugs, which is another problem in and of itself. Because again, if we if we be honest, and this is for a lot of people who want to be so supportive of, oh, well, what about the safety of the COs? And this is where this argument becomes a problem because what happens is now both sides are arguing with each other and still missing the whole point. If, if you look at the reason it's really a, a shortage on officers, it's because it was a lot of corruption. So with that corruption, a lot of them got fired due to catching cases themselves. That's right. That's and ever right. since, then, ever since then, it, they they haven't been able to hire enough to keep enough officers here. And why were did a lot of them catch cases and, and the feds had to come? Drugs. That's right. So again. We're talking about an issue <laughs> that is a problem for everybody. Every single day, I'm telling you, these brothers, the gurney got to come. Brothers are passing out, foaming out of the mouth. Some people straight OD, going 
going into cells, coming out under sheet. Like, this is, it, it's not a game. It's an ugly thing to watch. If you've ever watched um, The Walking Dead, and it's like you see a bunch of zombies walking around. When I tell you that that is the epitome of what is going on in these places, oh, that's God. what's going on. Lord have mercy. And, and I repeat, like, if people don't want to get with initiatives such as this, you're going to have to deal with these same zombies that are coming out of here, sometimes worse off than when they came in here. That's right. Because, again, you got you, you, you people in here for years not getting no help, no real education, no real help to deal with their mental health issues. You're pushing drugs in them, and that's it. Then you push them out the door. Yes. And you brought up the parole, the parole situation. These are the people that you let me go. So again, for all of you people who who want to point the finger at the bad guy, that's the bad guy. You believe in all this nonsense. Look at the parole situation. Ask yourself why. Majority of people that come out of here, all you ever hear about is we're going to get uh, nonviolent offenders who have drug problems. That, these are the ones that get paroled. <laughs> the men and women who actually deserve it, look at me personally. You know, they they told me to my face I'm low risk, that I should be set free. Right. But then turn right around and say, but due to the code, they can't let me go. Right. Then right. the guy that comes in there behind me, he had ticket after ticket, just came off locked up for numerous dirty yours. They gave him a six month delay release. And this is like time and time again. It's not one case. Right. So right. the point here again is if these type of initiatives are not uh, fought for, you know, you're going to constantly have these drug problems and it's, it's, it's affecting urban areas, cities, towns, suburbs. It does not matter. This situation with these prisons and, you know, the whole redemptive process is so much bigger than we even realize at this point. People, you got to get on board. And really help you. Say you love your country. Everybody says they love their country. I don't care what side of the political aisle you're on. That matters not to me now one bit. You say you love your country. It's, it's, it's groups like this initiative right here. How you show you love your country. The redemptive brilliance. Show the redeeming powers of the American people. Don't stand on one side or the other point, fingers hooting and hollering and not doing nothing. Meet in the middle, redemptive brilliance, help redeem the men and women who are downtrodden and been stepped on, and in turn, you're helping to redeem yourself. And then the bigger, beautiful thing is we redeem the country as a whole. Powerful, powerful. Awesome. I love it. I love it. Very well said, young man. So I'm getting ready to um, to end the recording, but I want everyone, everyone who hears this message from the inside to listen to every single word that you've heard and take it to heart and make the commitment to do your part, to do what we need to do to fix this situation. Thank you so much. My pleasure. You have 60 seconds remaining.